Hello, data people. Uh, I thought I'd make a short video to share um, a solution I recently provided to the community, uh, Power BI community um, website. And this one had to do with 445 calendars. Um, I don't personally use these a lot, but, but they're commonly used in businesses to have a, a set calendar where the, the weeks and months and years all start and end on the same day of the week. Um, and it really helps standardize things. And typically, the and, and the 445 calendar, where within each quarter, the first month of the quarter has four weeks, the second one has four weeks, and the third one has five weeks. So for a year, um, you end up with a 52-week calendar. And that's all well and good. It works great. But every once in a while, because there's 365 days in a year, not 364, eventually you have to sort of add in a week to catch things up again so that your calendar, your fiscal calendar doesn't get too far out of whack with the, the real calendar. And so I looked through a bunch of solutions online in both Excel and uh, Power BI um, and uh, saw a, a number of uh, creative approaches there. Um, but but it, I didn't see any that really did a good job of dealing with the, this issue where you have once in a while you need a, a year with 53 weeks. And so I came up with the solution I'll, I'll share with you today. Um, and again, um, put something in the comment box if I missed a great blog or video out there, I'd like to see it. So let me know if, if I missed a great one out there that already deals with this. Um, but in this approach, uh, I'm actually building the table backwards. I tried a bunch of ways to start out with a list of dates, which is how uh, most people approach it, and then try to come up with a clever formula to then sort of calculate the fiscal columns that I needed. Um, but figuring out the logic to auto detect a year and then uh, give it 53 weeks was pretty challenging. And so then I came up with this way and it, it made it much easier. And so I'm actually gonna build the um, fiscal year first and then expand things out. I'll show you the query in a minute to the month and week and then and then finally get to the dates. Um, and this approach allows you to either hard code in, you know, these are the years that have 53 weeks or um, depending on the logic used by your company, you could write a formula to dynamically determine which years have 53 weeks. And so I'll show you an example uh, that, that may be the reason, for, may be the uh, correct one for this one. Uh, maybe I guessed wrong, but um, but this approach, while this one is for the 445 calendar, um, you could adapt this approach to, to any kind of an ISO um, fiscal calendar like this. Um, and so in this person's example, uh, they had a 445 calendar um, and their, their end of the week was on Saturday, end of the year as well. Um, and it was working great, but they were having trouble getting 2019 to have 53 weeks, which is what their their system um, required. Uh, and if you look in 2019, you'd in fact see that November has five Saturdays, uh, which is probably why that was the case. Um, and so I'll, I'll go ahead and show you uh, just over a narrow range, 2018 to 2020, how this works with 2019, and then we can expand it uh, and show how to auto detect other years that, that maybe also need uh, that adjustment. Uh, reminder, if you like these videos, please follow me on Twitter, uh, at MahoneyPA, or uh, please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel uh, so you can be uh, notified when I put out other videos. So let's jump over to the query editor and show you uh, how I approach this. Um, uh, throughout here, in case you decide to use this M code, um, I'll put a link in the description to allow you to um, download this file so you can get the M code. Uh, I added a number of um, steps here where I added comments. Um, you also can see them if you go to the advanced editor. Um, and you'll, you'll see all the comments in green here that I added to give some instruction on how to use it. Um, you'll also notice here, and I'll explain this in a minute, there's actually two steps uh, with the same name. One of them's commented out, and this is just to either hard code the year or to have a function to detect which year uh, should have that. So let's walk through how to do it. So I, I first step here is um, of the uh, years you want to make the calendar for of the very first year, this would be the first day of that first year. And so this calendar is going to start from uh, 2018. So the first uh, fiscal day of that calendar is the end of 2017. Then I put the range in as a list um, 
reminder, you can just use the curly brackets and two uh, periods in between, and then it will create a list that spans over the, uh, between those numbers. So this is uh, four years of a calendar. Um, in this case, I'm hard coding uh, just that 2019 uh, has to have 53 weeks. From that, I'm creating a starting table, just using table from columns from that previous step um, there, and then uh, adding some logic here to say basically, you know, if if the year is in that list of years with 53 weeks, then give it 53. Otherwise, give it 52. Change type, and then this is a key step here where I'm actually adding the the pattern uh, for the whole year of how many weeks are in each month of that year. And so there's 12 values here. Um, and here's the 445 pattern. It repeats uh, through each quarter. This is the for most years. And then for the years with 53 weeks, the 11th value is a 5 instead of a 4. And so that's how we're going to um, make that year one year one week longer than, than the other years. And I'm using list.zip just so I can get a list of lists um, that contains uh, a value of 1 to 12 for the fiscal month and then the number of weeks that month should have, right? And so if you pre that, preview that, you actually get uh, a list of lists. And in here is like, you know, 1 comma 4 and then, you know, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 5 is, is what's, what's in those lists. Uh, and so then we expand that and for every row, so each list in that list of lists gets its own row. And now we could, we could click here and see one, four, two, two, four, three, five, et cetera. And so, um, we have that. And then of course for 2019, oh, I forget, that's probably the November one. Uh, the November one has five, whereas the, the other ones, uh, for the November would have had four. So then we can extract the values um, and then I split column by delimiter. So now I have a fiscal month column as well as a number of weeks column. Another uh, type change there to make those whole numbers. And then I'm going to add another column where I auto generate a list uh, going from starting with one going to the number of weeks. And so this is what I'm going to do because now I'm going to expand this column to create a row for every week. And now I've done that, so one, two, three, four, and then March would have one, two, three, four, five, uh, et cetera. Another type change. Um, then I like to have in my date tables, I like to have an index column. So this was a convenient step to do that. I just added an index column so that every Frisco week has its own, uh, it increments to the next number. So if I'm writing future DAX and I need to go back a week or, or whatever, uh, that's real easy for me to do because it's in my date table. And now I'm going to expand this out to the day level. So again, I'm making, uh, I'm just adding seven rows. Basically, there's nothing different here. Every row is just a list from one to seven. Expand that out, and now I've got uh, uh, a row for every day. Again, a type change. Um, clean things up a little bit. Remove a bunch of columns, and so now I, I've gone from I've got the year, I've got the fiscal month. I've got the, the week in that month in case that's useful. And then I've got the week index. Now let's uh, make our date column. Typically you would start with this, the list of list.dates, but now we're gonna add it differently. So I'm gonna add another index column. And so now I've got a day index, which again, may be useful in future DAX uh, calculations. I'm starting it with zero. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is just add our start date. So the thing we put in very right at the top, um, I can do that and I'm going to add that number of days to it. And so with this, it starts on that date. And then for all four of those years, 2018 uh, to 2021, it it uh, just adds the next day. So I get a nice uh, chronological uh, with all the dates covered going through there. And of course, down at uh, November of 2019, that one has five weeks in that month and everything works great and I have a calendar that uh, meets my, my business need. So um, this one, uh, like I showed before, is uh, the hard-coded version. And I'll just show you quickly the dynamic version. And again, I don't know if this is the right logic for this company's calendar or not. 
but what I'm going to do is switch this and, and I like to do this trick where I'll actually name two steps with the same name and comment one out so that way I can easily toggle back and forth if I have different scenarios uh, or whatever. And so you highlight the step, hold control, hit forward slash, um, and then I can uncomment the other one with the same steps. I get on that, that row, hold control, forward slash, and I've done that. And so in this case, I've just written some logic uh, that says, okay, of the year range that I've put in, go through and check each one. And if I, I form uh, the date of, I grab, I make November 30th of whatever year I'm currently iterating over and wrap that in date dot day of week name. And if that day of the year in that year is a Saturday, um, then it stays in the list. And, and it, in this case, it just generates the same list that I had hard coded. Um, and, but, but this would work over a much broader rate, uh, uh, range of dates as well. Um, but I, I don't need to show that, but I will, I will just accept that change. Um, and again, I get the exact same table cause I haven't done it. But again, if, um, if I had different logic, I could put different logic here, depending on which how you decide which year should have the 53 weeks. Um, again, I could do a much bigger range if I put a, a broader range of values here. Um, and the key thing would just be if you change this, if I went to 2010, for example, I would need my start date here to be the first fiscal day uh, for the 2010 fiscal calendar. Uh, and then I can you know, close and apply and it actually runs pretty fast and I get my uh, date table, uh, my fiscal date table, uh, exactly what I need. Uh, and of course, you know, those are just the, the columns I made. You know, if, if you need to um, add more date columns, you probably do this one's pretty bare bones. Um, then you could uh, go back in and, and continue this and add other, um, other, uh, date columns, for example, using that, that final column here that has the, uh, the dates here. So you could, you know, add a column and, and do, you know, month and quarter and, and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so hopefully uh, you found this video interesting, useful, and reminder to subscribe to this YouTube channel if, if you want to keep seeing videos like this. Thank you.